The idea of a trio of legendaries started all the way back in Pokemon Red and Blue, with Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno. For only the second time, Game Freak decided to add a new member to an existing legendary trio. They probably felt that uh, Thunderous, Landorus, and Tornadus were not dominating competitive Pokemon enough. Haha. <laughs> But the real question on everyone's minds is how good actually is Enamorous and will it be able to compete for the title of Pokemon World Champion? Enamorous is an addition to the legendary trio of Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus, one of the most beloved legendary trios of all time. And this infamy is well deserved. Starting in 2011, when they were introduced, Tornadus, Thunderous, or Landorus placed at least fourth place in every single world championship they were legal, and won the entire tournament in over half of those. Part of what makes these three so strong is that they each have two formies, their incarnate form and their Therian form. These form changes maintain the total amount of stats they have, but they redistribute where they're placed. For example, Landorus loses 10 speed and special attack and gains 20 attack instead. Additionally, they each gain a new ability. And while some of these are a downgrade, Landorus T's ability lets it be in contention for the best competitive Pokemon ever. Now, this video is not about the original trio, it's about Enamorous, but I think that understanding how its siblings have done over the years in competitive Pokemon will give us a better sense of what we can expect from Enamorous. Enamorous's typing of fairy and flying only has three weaknesses, but it gets many resistances. How good this typing is, both defensively and offensively, was showcased by Togekiss in the Dynamax era, between 2020 and 2022. It can learn multiple strong special attacks that give it decent coverage, like Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, and Springtide Storm, but we'll come back to that later, alongside Earth Power or Mystical Fire to hit Steel and Poison types. Psychic and Grass Knot are some other options for special attacks, since unfortunately, Enamorous doesn't have a special flying type attack. Thanks to Terrestrialization, however, Enamorous can use Terra Flying Terra Blast to get that secondary stab, which does even more damage than Moonblast, assuming both are neutral. Enamorous also has some solid setup options in Calm Mind and Iron Defense, and good support moves in Tailwind and Taunt. Like the other genies, Enamorous has two forms that share the same move pool and typing, while stats and abilities are different. Let's start by taking a look at Enamorous Incarnate. Enamorous' stats in the Incarnate form are above average, with high special attack and good speed. And though it's best used as a special attacker, it can also use a mixed attacker set, but again, we'll talk more about that later. Its abilities, Q Charm and Contrary, are both interesting, with especially Contrary allowing some neat combinations in past generation. Ooh, that rhymes. If you're not familiar with Contrary, basically it turns any stat drops into stat boosts and any stat boosts into stat drops. Unfortunately for Enamorous, it doesn't learn moves like Overheat, Draco Meteor, or Leaf Storm, which would allow it to boost its own stats dramatically. The only move it can learn that drops its own stats is Super Power, which lowers attack and defense by one stage. While raising two of your stats instead of lowering them is great, the issue is that Enamorous really prefers to be a special attacker, and Superpower raises physical attack, not special. This does allow Enamorous to run a mixed Assault Vest set that uses Superpower to boost its defense while having high special bulk thanks to the Assault Vest. Contrary is also useful against stat drops coming from Intimidate, Parting Shot, Eerie Impulse, Icy Wind, Snarl, and even Bleak Wind Storm. Even though Enamorous can't lower its own stats, that doesn't mean that its partner can't do it for it. Enamorous makes a dangerous duo with a supporting Thunderous that can use Eerie Impulse on its own partner Enamorous to boost its special attack by two stages. It can also use Scary Face to double Enamorous' speed. Both moves can also be used on the opponent to lower their special attack and speed respectively. Well, unless the opponent also has a contrary Enamorous. Enamorous Incarnate could even be used as a full physical attacker with Superpower, Play Rough, and Iron Head, but I wouldn't recommend that as it's going to be lacking power and type coverage. The other ability Enamorous Incarnate can have is Cute Charm, which I'd say is the same ability as about 20% of my viewers who are subscribed to this channel. There's a ton of people watching who aren't subscribed, so if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, if you're not familiar with Cute Charm, it basically gives any Pokemon that damages your Cute Charm Pokemon a 30% chance of falling in love if it's the opposite gender of your Pokemon and they make contact with a physical move. While a 30% chance of infatuation is not horrible by any means, uh, it only works if the opponent has the opposite gender as your Pokemon, which, let's be honest, is a little archaic. And since Enamorous is always female, to avoid being affected by Cute Charm, competitive players will likely intentionally use all female Pokemon in tournaments to eliminate even the slim chance of falling in love. If there's one thing competitive Pokemon players know about that isn't Pokemon, it's how to avoid falling in love. 
But the real problem with Q-Charm is that even if your opponent has a Pokemon that is the opposite gender of Enamorous, they need to hit Enamorous with a contact move, trigger the 30% activation condition, and then fail a subsequent 50% attraction condition for the ability to do anything at all. And Enamorous needs to not be knocked out or switched out as well. There's just too much that needs to go right for this ability to do anything consistently. That being said, there is one reason to use Cute Charm Enamorous, and that's when Contrary would get in the way. If you wanted to use Calm Mind Enamorous, Contrary would cause your stat boosts to become stat drops. So you'd rather have an ability that would basically be worthless than one that actively gets in your way. If you're interested in trying out Calm Mind Enamorous for yourself, I'd recommend maxing out its speed and special attack and running a moveset of Protect, Calm Mind, Earth Power, and Moonblast or Springtide Storm. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about Springtide Storm yet. As of Scarlet and Violet, each of the genies gets a new signature attack. Each of these moves is 100 power, 80 accuracy, and has a secondary effect. For the other genies, the accuracy can be boosted if the move is used in rain, but for some reason this doesn't change Enamorous's Springtide Storm's accuracy. I don't personally recommend using this move because, well, yeah, it is really strong and lowering the opponent's attack stat is really nice. It's just missing it can be such a big deal and the accuracy is way too low to be consistent. I shudder to think about how many games I've lost because I missed a rock slide and this move misses twice as often. Thousand Gleam is only slightly weaker and it always hits, while Moonblast is a strong choice to hit one Pokemon for more damage. So now you have a decent idea of how you can use Enamorous Incarnate, but we haven't answered a central question. How good is it? One way we can answer this is by comparing Enamorous Incarnate to the pre-existing genies, and guessing how good it will be compared to how good its counterpart has been. In my opinion, Enamorous Incarnate is most similar to Landorus Incarnate. It's slightly faster and a fair bit stronger, but it has less overall bulk. Both these Pokemon are geared towards outspeeding the opponent and doing big special damage, and both have a great offensive type of ground and fairy. So that begs the question, how great was Landorus actually? Unfortunately, not great. Landers Incarnate has seen some play over the years. Most recently, last format, it was used occasionally as a Dynamax Pokemon that could outspeed and KO Charizard, and I myself used it with Sand Force to get second at a regional back in 2012. However, it's always been very niche. It isn't especially bulky, but it also isn't strong enough to KO things on its own without some help, and that can make it a liability to use. It was never bad by any means though, it was just niche because it was difficult to use. Landers Incarnate actually managed to win the US National Championships all the way back in 2013 with its hidden ability Sheer Force, despite being extremely overshadowed that entire year by its Therian counterpart. With this comparison, I think it means that there's hope for Enamorous. It's not going to be on every team, but I think it could do well given the right support. Of course, for Enamorous to actually do well, it's going to have to overcome a major obstacle. Fluttermane. Currently the most used Pokemon by uh, a lot, Fluttermane has been dominating competitive Pokemon since it was introduced earlier this year. And that's a problem for Enamorous for two reasons. First, most teams that would want a fast special attacking fairy type would prefer Fluttermane. It's significantly faster than Enamorous with the same special attack stats. While Enamorous is bulkier on the physical side, Fluttermane can make better use of its secondary typing and also has access to the incredible item Booster Energy, which can make it either faster or stronger depending on player preference. At a glance, Fluttermane is the fast fairy type she tells you not to worry about, and Enamorous will have to fight hard to even make it on any team in the first place. The second issue with Fluttermane is that right now, players are doing everything in their power to make the lives of fast, special attacking fairy Pokemon miserable. Because Fluttermane is the most used Pokemon, players are making sure to have lots of answers for it, whether by teching moves like Heavy Slam on bulky physical attackers, or running defensive Terra types of Steel or Poison. While these measures are designed to fluster Fluttermane, they have an unfortunate secondary effect of making Enamorous's life more difficult. While Flutter doesn't falter, Enamorous flounders in this field created at the fault of Flutter. Despite all of this, I don't think Enamorous is doomed. Thanks to its access to Earth Power, it has access to some counterplay that Fluttermane lacks, and its contrary ability allows it to do some things that Fluttermane just can't. I'm personally most interested in the Thunderous and Amorous pairing I mentioned with Fury Impulse and Scary Face, but it's also possible a strong set exists that I haven't even considered yet. So the real thing we haven't considered is Enamorous Therian, the strangest of all the Therian forms. See, the other three Therian forms are all similar to their incarnate forms. Yeah, they gain a new ability, but their stats and the role that they play mostly stays the same. 
Tornadus' Ethereum form gets slightly faster and bulkier at the cost of some offense, and Thunderous and Landorus get a little slower in exchange for some more power. In all these cases, a few stats change between 10 and 20 points, making this a light redistribution. And Amorous scoffs at this precedent. While its HP, defense, and special attack remain unchanged, Enamorous gives up 60 speed in exchange for 40 defense and 20 special defense. This is such a dramatic change that it completely changes the way that Enamorous can be used and the role that it can play on a team, going from a fast special attacker to a slow trick room attacker. What this results in is something completely different than the other three genies. Because their stats are so similar between the forms, there's often a better version depending on the ability. With Enamorous, the two different forms are so unlike one another that they can actually play like two different Pokemon. Apart from the stats, the other big difference between Enamorous's forms is the ability. While Enamorous Incarnate has the choice between Cute Charm and Contrary, Enamorous Therian has only one option, Overcoat. Luckily, this is a great ability. It protects the user from all powder moves, the same as if it were holding the safety goggles item. While this won't do something in every matchup, being completely immune to Amoongus will be a big deal this format as it's a highly used Pokemon. An Amorous Therian still has the same move pool as its incarnate form and as such should be used with special attacks. Due to its low speed, it's the first genie that will be best used on teams with Trick Room. This turns the low speed from a curse to a boon. For example, Enamorous Therian is one of the few Pokemon that can underspeed Ursaluna and do big damage to it no matter which of the common Terra types it uses. Despite the prominence of Fluttermane, there actually aren't that many fairy resistances in the metagame right now, so spamming strong fairy type attacks under Trick Room is a valid tactic. Enamorous can use a few items well. I personally think Choice Specs is the strongest, but Pixie Plate, Assault Vest, and even Life Orb can be good alternatives. On a Choice Spec set, using Terra Flying and Terra Blast is a great way to get flying coverage once again, though so Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam are going to be the main moves you click. Earth Power rounds out the set with nice coverage against Poison and Steel types. You can also run Protect if you aren't using Choice Specs, or Mystical Fire for a bit of utility and the ability to hit Amoongus for super effective damage. Under Trick Room, Enamorous Therian can form an especially dreadful offensive combination with Torkoal. Torkoal can use Sun Boosted Eruption, which pairs really well offensively with Enamorous's fairy type attacks. In the current metagame, only Heatran, Arcanine, and Opposing Torkoal resist this combination, and all those can be dealt with by Earth Power from either Torkoal or Enamorous. If for some reason you'd rather not KO your opponent right away with strong fairy type attacks, there is another way to use Enamorous Therian. You can use it as a setup sweeper. With good bulk and an immunity to Amoongus' Rage Powder and Spore, it can certainly find opportunities to set up Calm Mind or even Iron Defenses. It doesn't get stored power and it is susceptible to critical hits, but I bet into certain teams it could do really well. When using a setup set, the item should probably be Leftovers or Citrus Berry to increase its longevity. If you want to run this set, I'd personally recommend Calm Mind, Protect, Moonblast, and Earth Power, but you can also run Springtide Storm if you like to gamble. While an Amorous is a good Trick Room Sweeper, it's hard to say for sure how many people will use it. It has a lot going for it, but Trick Room is kind of in a weird space right now. Many teams are carrying slow Pokemon like Ursaluna, Iron Hand, and Amoongus, even if they don't plan on setting Trick Room up themselves. On top of that, many teams that use Trick Room prefer the fast, fairy-type damage of Fluttermane as insurance in case Trick Room doesn't go up. And it doesn't help that Enamorous Therian can't do anything to help set up Trick Room in the first place, unlike Amoongus or Iron Hands. That being said, I think on teams that are willing to commit more to Trick Room, Enamorous could be strong. Being able to ignore Amoongus without forfeiting your Terra type or item is a big deal, as is underspeeding Ursaluna against opposing Trick Room teams. All in all, I doubt Enamorous Therian will be popular, but I think it could find success on the right team. So, where does that leave us? You now know what to expect from the two different Enamorous forms, or at least what they're capable of. But the bigger question of how good they will do at the upcoming World Championships has to remain unanswered for a little while longer. For now, all we can do is think, test, and wait and see if the final genie will earn its spot at the top in a few weeks' time.